Speaking of sobering, today we are going to talk about tax day. Uh, 16th Amendment to the Constitution, ratified February 3rd, 1913, grants Congress authority to issue an income tax without having to determine it based on population. And uh, I didn't want to get bogged down in all this, but there were income taxes long before that, and sometimes they had them and sometimes they didn't, and sometimes they were uh, ruled unconstitutional, but this is the, the 16th Amendment. Of course, tomorrow is tax day, and uh, there are people that they're going to hold on to that money as long as they can and not give it to the government, and they just, just relish the idea of standing at the mailbox, and at 11.59 and 59 seconds, they stick the envelope in the mailbox. I'm not one of those. I always did my part. A lot of you here know that, uh, that Jan does taxes. She does volunteer help for taxes. And, uh, and it is totally volunteer. There's some people that want to give her money, and they're not allowed to take it. And uh, allowed to give her, not allowed to give her any kind of gift or tip or anything. And she's very strict about that. She will not accept it doesn't work that way at home, but, but it works that way with taxes. And uh, she always did enjoy that. She likes the numbers, and, and so she always did her part, and I always did my part. When she was working on taxes, I took the kids, and we went out and had fun. Came back when she was done. Tomorrow's tax day. It's a day of reckoning. Uh, we owe certain things to the government, and... Uh, they're going to get it. In the book of Ezra, taxes played a big part. Ezra and Nehemiah, as you, you know, came back from Babylonian captivity, and they were going to uh, rebuild the, the wall and the temple and institute, reinstitute the uh, Israel religion. And, and uh, so their enemies... Amongst a whole lot of other things they tried to do, they didn't want them to rebuild Jerusalem. And so they pulled out all the stops, and one of the things they did is they, they uh, convinced Artaxerxes. He was a very powerful king, that if you know, Jerusalem's never been anything but trouble, and if you allow these people to go and, and, and rebuild, uh, you're not going to get tax money. Whoa. <laughs> That case, they're not going to rebuild. And he stopped them for a while because of that. Taxes are a big thing. Luke 23, 2. We're going to see a little later on in, in some of our texts that Jesus promoted people paying taxes. Paul did. If you owe it, pay it. There are reasons that you have taxes. And, and, uh, and yet, when Jesus was on trial... One of the things, and again, this is just a, a sore point with, with a lot of folks and a lot of uh, governments, uh, they, they said, uh, you know, Jesus is opposed to paying taxes to the Roman government, and he claims to be the Christ. Well, the Roman government didn't care if he claimed to be the Christ or not, but what do you mean not paying taxes? Now listen to that. Got a question for you. Who said, read my lips, no new taxes? Part of the, this is part of the read my lips speech. All we tend to remember is those six words. And, of course, there are some people here that know it well. August 18th, 1988, it was part of his acceptance speech at the uh, Republican National Convention. And... Uh, and he says, uh, Michael Dukakis, I think, was his opponent. And Michael Dukakis had said, well, it's, you know, if it's possible, I'm not going to raise taxes. George Bush comes back and he says, my opponent won't rule out raising taxes, but I will. And the Congress will push me to raise taxes, and I'll say no. And they'll push, and I'll say no. And they'll push again, and I'll say to them, read my lips, no new taxes. 
that's the man, George H.W. Bush, who made that statement that he came to didn't even write it, but he read it. He raised taxes. I don't care what they do, I'll never raise taxes, and what do you do but raise taxes? And lost his reelection bid. There was a day of reckoning. People remember things like that. We still remember, read my lips, no new taxes. And when you do that, I don't trust you and I'm not voting for you. I want us to think about this. Tax day is a day of reckoning. And, uh, and of course, there are always people, well, we got an extension. We filed an extension. And the first time I ever heard that, I thought, well, I want to do that too. Until I found out, you don't just say I want an extension and it goes for free. What was I thinking? A day of reckoning for Al Capone. <laughs> and of course, Al Capone did all sorts of uh, things that would be rather questionable in the Christian life. But uh, this is the big one that they got him on. 11 years in prison. Chuck Berry, if you remember him, 120 days in prison for income tax evasion. Big ruckus when Martha Stewart failed to pay taxes. She did five months, and when she got home, she did another five months uh, inbound at her house. Willie Nelson, he's a little different than everybody else on this list. Uh, one day he got a bill for $16.7 million dollars. That's a lot of money for most of us. He sold a whole lot of stuff. He wrote a song about not paying taxes, made a lot of money off that, and a whole lot of people came to his aid and gave money to him and, and uh, bought a lot of his things from you know, some real special memorabilia. And a lot of them, after they bought it, gave it back to him. Lo and behold, that guy raised $16.7 million. Pete Rose. Uh, Pete Rose, most of us remember, gambled in baseball, got in big trouble for that. <laughs> IRS says, we don't care what you gamble on. Pay us the money you owe us. And he spent five months in prison. Daryl Strawberry, another... Well-known baseball player, three months in prison because he didn't pay his taxes, and Wesley Snipes, one of the more recent ones, three years in prison. There comes a day of reckoning. You don't just let it slide and let it go and never take care of things. If you're reading along with us in the daily Bible readings, uh, this is a recent one in 1 Samuel chapter 7, and of course in chapter 8 is where our scripture reading came from. In chapter 7, Israel had been without the Ark of the Covenant for 20 years. Uh, Eli's sons were corrupt. They were corrupt priests. And they took the Ark of the Covenant out into battle and lost the battle, and lost the Ark of the Covenant. The Philistines had it for seven months. Nothing but trouble for them. <clears throat> and so they brought it back to Israel. They said, we've had enough of this. Seventy men looked inside the Ark of the Covenant and died. And they moved it to another place, and it was just kind of there for 20 years. Israel repented, they fasted, they confessed, they poured out water before the Lord, and I'd love to preach about that, but I'm just going to encourage you to look it up and see what that means. Why would you pour water out before the Lord? They put away their foreign gods, and you notice as you read through the scripture, when they put away their foreign gods, somehow or another... Not too long after that, somebody still got foreign gods. I 
I told you I'd be quick today, Jan. You don't have to help me. She's on the AV team this morning. <coughs> they put away their foreign gods. God thundered. The Philistines, was, they were an army that there was no way Israel could come close to defeating it. And God made it thunder and made it thunder so loud that they, they left. They ran away. God saved them. They were reunited. And, and Samuel raises the stone of help and names it Ebenezer. Samuel was old. And his sons were corrupt. And Israel didn't want him. We're not going to go through all this again. And, and so they wanted a king. And Samuel warned them. There are going to be taxes. There's going to be a reckoning. You're going to have to pay. And uh, this is what Chris read to us this morning. This is just an abbreviated list. He's going to come and he's going to take your sons. He's going to have a draft. There'll be soldiers. Some of them are going to be workers on the farm. Uh, your daughters are going to work in the food services. Uh, he's going to come and take your grain, your livestock. There's something he wants. Just got to call it a tax and take it. <coughs> Samuel said, someday you will regret it. And you'll come to God. You'll say, we, we made an awful mistake. And he's going to say, should have thought about that earlier. And so they hear about all the taxes and the day of reckoning and what's going to cost them. And, and uh, they say, well, that sounds good to us. Give us a king. King Solomon had a son by the name of Rehoboam. Solomon had the most glorious kingdom that Israel ever saw. He built a grand kingdom at a grand price, and, and uh, there was a queen known as the Queen of Sheba. And uh, she heard all about Solomon and his wisdom and his riches, and, and uh, finally she says, i got to go check this out for myself. She went down, and she had all these questions, tough questions she was going to ask Solomon. He answered them one right after another. He showed her around to all of the the wealth and the buildings and the palaces and the riches that he had and, and uh, gold and ivory everywhere. And she says, I've been told about this. I thought nothing could be this good and I came down and found out they didn't even tell me the half of it. How do you think Solomon got all that stuff? <laughs> Tax day! There was a day of reckoning. The people didn't like it very well. It was at a high cost. And, and, and so when Solomon dies and his son Rehoboam is going to be put on the throne, here's what the people say. Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we'll serve you. Solomon had everything. They had the, the most glorious kingdom you could imagine, more than the Queen of Sheba could imagine. And look at the cost. And they said, we're just not going to put up with this any longer. And so Rehoboam took some bad advice. He, he was given some good advice by the elders. They said, you need to listen to the people. You've got to lighten up, lower the tax rate. He says, I think I'm going to go talk to, to some of my peers and see what they say. The young man who had grown up with him replied, Tell these people who have said to you, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make your, our, lo our yoke lighter. Tell them, My father's little finger is thicker than, or my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid on you a heavy yoke. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Rehoboam never said, read my lips, no new taxes. 
He said, read my lips. You ain't seen nothing yet. He had a, a man that was in charge of forced labor. His name was Adoram. And, uh, and Adoram, I suppose, if you were going to put another name on him or give his job a title, it would be tax collector, charge of forced labor. And so he went out and he was going to get some forced labor, and they killed him. And so Rehoboam jumped in a chariot and took off and headed for the hills and saved his own life. Tax day wasn't very popular. Tax day is a day of reckoning. Paul writes about submitting to authorities and People do all kinds of things with this passage and other similar passages. Well, there's a reason that I don't do that. Well, maybe we should look at it and say, well, there's a reason that I do that. Romans 13, he, he talks about submitting to authorities. He doesn't really talk about whether we like them or not or whether they're uh, corrupt or not. I mean, it's not like there was never a corrupt king in Israel or Rome. This is also why you pay taxes to the authorities, which are God's servants, who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. It's going to be a day of reckoning. Jesus talks about the temple tax. Could you imagine if we had a church tax? Mike, how many people do you think would shop around a little bit if we had a church tax? They had one. Exodus chapter 30. When they took the census... Every man over 20 years old had to pay the, the temple tax every year. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax came to Peter and asked, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house. Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked. From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own sons or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the sons are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not offend them, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open his mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax for yours. And although Jesus makes his point that he's not bound by their temple tax because he is the son of the kingdom, as a matter of fact, uh, when he went in and threw the money changers out, he said, you've made my house a den of thieves. Belong to him. I see some guys already getting all excited about going fishing. If you find a drachma and a fish of a mouth, God bless you. It's there for church tax. Don't forget. Again, Jesus is uh, asked a lot of questions. And this is a, a very familiar one. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. The Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. Now, remember we talked a little bit earlier about the passage out of Luke 23, 2? And Jesus never, I mean, we just read about him paying the temple tax, even though he says we're exempt from it. We'll pay it. Now he's going to say you need to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And when they get in front of, of uh, the authorities in his trial, 
Boy, you should have heard what Jesus said. He's telling people all over the place, don't you pay your taxes. He never said that. They're trying to trap him in his words, and they can't do it, so they just lie. People do things like that. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. And this is kind of an interesting thing, too. The Herodians were another a sect, another group of Jews who didn't like the Pharisees. They just did not like each other, but, but now they're getting together and they're going to gang up on Jesus because we got this common enemy. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. And the only reason they would ever say this is because they're trying to get him buttered up and flattered and lure him into quickly answering this question. They didn't believe this for a minute. If they did, they would have repented. Tell us, Sam, what's your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, <clears throat> and he asked them, Whose portrait's this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. The point I want to make this morning is this. Uh, we, you know, we think about taxes and we think about tax day and we think about uh, a day of reckoning. And Jesus really makes a good point here, a great point that we could kind of slide over. He says, you give to Caesar what Caesar's and to God what belongs to God. There's a day of reckoning coming. Do we give to God what belongs to God? That's the real question. It's a picture of a pickup truck with, uh, kind of looks like a, a drinking trough for cattle, but it's not. You know what it is? It's a baptistry. There have been some folks who are on fire for the Lord and, and they want to baptize people just like we think people should be baptized for the remission of their sins. Only they didn't go out and study with people and say, and someday we're going to do that. If, if we could take a little bit of a, a lesson from the Ethiopian eunuch, here's a tub of water right here in my truck. What does hinder me from being baptized? And they did it. And that is something to be praised and not criticized. It's going to be a day of reckoning. And what is owed is going to come due. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered. And laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. I loved Bill Spindler. I learned so much from him. He didn't teach me about Christianity. He modeled it. I remember one of his stories. It was an Indian. It was... Hearing a guy preach, never heard a sermon about Jesus before, and he thought he would. He's sitting there listening to this sermon about Jesus and uh, that you need to, to give to God. He's given to you. And he heard enough of it that it moved him, and he thought, I really need my blanket, and so I'm going to give it to God. And he took it up, and he set it down in front of the preacher. And he went back and listened to a little bit more preaching about Jesus and he went back up and he took his blanket 
and brought his horse that he really needed down and laid the horse down in front of the preacher. Got to give that to God. And he went back and he listened to a little bit more preaching about Jesus. And he went and took his horse back. And he walked up and laid down in front of the preacher. And he came to the realization that short of myself, it's not going to satisfy my Lord and God. Make your body a living sacrifice. What's reckoned? What do you owe? What's due to this this God of all creation who knows everything and sees everything and it still astounds me when we pray that, that God hears all the words that I'm saying? You ever been in a crowded room and hear a lot of people talking? Let me tell you this, when you get a little older and your hearing gets a little worse, it doesn't get any easier. How can God know and hear everybody in every word? And how can I think that someday I'm not going to be accountable to him? That somehow or another I'm going to maybe file an extension and get another chance? Tax day is tomorrow. The day of salvation is today. If there's any way we can assist you in your obedience to our Savior today, we invite you to come forward now and make your wishes known as we stand and sing.